Yeah, very good. Okay, dokie. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are here with this unprecedented, unprecedented thing. Do I need to mute myself? I need to mute myself. Right. So this is a dual stream. This was gonna we're gonna be streaming together with Nikolai, and the premise of the stream is very simple. The premise of the stream is very simple. I will try to learn new features in the, in the recent Java releases, and uh, and and Nikolai will try to teach me. Right. So eventually we're gonna go through all the new stuff in in the series of those streams we're going to go through all the stuff from say java 12 uh maybe even some features in java 10 uh or 9 because some of my projects are still in java 8 but all in all i think i think we are uh we're gonna go through the java releases and new features today we're gonna look at the records in jdk 16 mostly because well, JDK 16 is very new, right? It was released on Tuesday, and we, we're gonna just see how it goes. The setup here for the stream is highly experimental. I can, I can, I can still, uh, mm, the setup is highly experimental. This is what I want to say, right? So I don't know what's, uh, what's gonna happen. I have an ID with Java 16. I downloaded the Java 16 before. Nikola has prepared some examples for me to go through, and we're gonna see how it goes. So that's that's the 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 simple the simple the simple setup, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm done with the introductions. So I'm gonna mute myself on the call with Nikolai. Look, and he's like, <laughs> let's do this. Oh boy, Nikolai is running ahead of time here with me. Right. Right. So you can see on the background is my ID. This is the projector. Nikolai, are you actually here? I cannot hear you. Come back to Zoom. Come back to Zoom. I cannot hear you. Can't hear you. You need to come back to Zoom. If you are hearing, if you hear me, then stop touching my ID. <laughs> You're opening windows. <laughs> And that makes me nervous, and I see that, right? So, uh, right. Can I hear you? Say something. Say something. I'm not redirecting any audio. Alex, you got some preferences. I can hear my other music, right? And I can hear your stream. But I cannot hear. I cannot hear. I can hear your stream, but I cannot hear you from Zoom. <laughs> right. So what we gonna do? Whose Zoom is that? Whose Zoom is that? Thank you, God Warrior One. Message from. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can hear me, right? You can hear me. Yes, I think this is this is yours. Like I need to mute my stream. Not I. I need to. I need to mute. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. But just the problem is I cannot hear you. So that means that means is. Can you exit the Zoom and enter the Zoom again? Because Zoom is the slightest smallest thing, right? Just come back to Zoom and see, let's see if that fixes the problem. Uh, are you doing it? From my Zoom windows. Maybe it's my Zoom. Maybe it's my Zoom. But I think it's yours. Okay, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna exit Zoom. I'm gonna activity monitor this and be patient with us people in the chat watching, right? This is not something we do every day. This is a highly experimental stream, as I said. I'm gonna quit Zoom, force quit Zoom. And then we're gonna go back to Slack 
and then open zoom again. We're going to open zoom again. Right, I'm back in the meeting and I'm sending you what's my microphone. Um, yeah, I, I can. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Can you hear me? Nikolai. Sorry, folks. This is come back to the t say something, say something, say something, say something, say something, <laughs> say something. Come on, Nikolai, this is no fun, right? You, you, you got to be more professional than this. And by more professional, I mean more prepared. You are a streamer. You have almost a thousand followers. I hope you're still rooting the Zoom voice to your stream. People who are watching his stream, right? I want to address you. This is a problem on Nikolai's end. So what you should do, you should come watch my stream <laughs> instead, <laughs> because there are no problems on my end. We should show him, right? But like, let's let's while he is figuring out stuff, uh, let's do this uh, differently, right? Nikolai, come back, come back, come to Zoom. Okay, I can hear you. You can hear now me now. Now you're in Zoom. Yes. You can, can hear me now in Zoom. Yes. Uh, somebody who is watching my stream, can you hear Nikolai as well? <laughs> okay, yeah, so if you good. just joined out there, uh, we're still figuring out the technical aspect. Right. But we're getting closer, I think. Right. I think we are all done, right? We yeah, are all done. I think we are. So, he's a little loud. Stop being so loud. <laughs> that's that's just me. What sorry. About what, about, what about now? What about now? So if he gets too loud and too obnoxious, just tell me, right? You tell yeah. me, and I will, I will, I will kind of limit his loudness, his volume. Right. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn new features in Java. Uh, and starting today, we're gonna do the records. Here, here you can see the ID. This is my IntelliJ idea. This is a highly experimental setup. I don't think it's before today. I didn't think it will work, right? So, but it's 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 currently this, right? So, I have this machine on the Oracle Cloud, uh, a Linux machine, and you can see here. I'm gonna show you, right? It's a it's a decent machine, right? So there are some cores, there is some memory available. So this is my workstation. This is my workstation. I'm gonna, I'm using that for all my videos, demos, and so on. Uh, now. This machine is running JetBrains Projector, which is the an application that kind of rewrites AWT. Uh, so it can start other applications, and then instead of like rendering them on screen, it sends the output to the browser, right? So now this is my client on the machine that connects to the projector running on the server. So this is this is the IDE running on the server that I see. Now, it's also the same ID that Nikolai sees. Yes, right? I just because did the he... same thing, right? I just connected yeah, to he... the same to the same URL. Yeah, so so what we can do, we can do things like, uh, hello, Nikolai, right? And he can delete this line. Oh, yeah, well, he, he can, he can, why would he delete this line, right? So we are editing the same thing. We are seeing the same thing. So if you are watching both streams, look, I opened the window or the menu, and now both, both things just uh, opened, right? Like you yeah. can see that on his stream as well. So By the way, that is really scary also that it just opened, like it works really well too, that uh, both work on the same, on the, like it's not just the editor window, right? Like it's everything, it's the entire IDE. I even have access to the, uh, to the command line via the terminal, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. This is like, that's why I'm running this on the like cloud machine, which is, has nothing, it's a demo machine. So to limit kind of the applicability of Nikolai's malicious skills. <laughs> are you so afraid? let's do this. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. There are also other challenges here. Uh, uh, Trianon is asking, is there a link for a tutorial how to set this up? Uh, 
there is there is a like the actual thing right so there is an actual thing called projector uh projector server right so i think this is the main repository github.com just slash jetbrains projector server uh and it also goes into the details how to run this you can also do this with other java applications not necessarily idea uh, i've tried it on the visual vm for example and it worked uh and yeah, so it is kind of like really, really cool. And then from here, you can find the links, I think to documentation. So you install, you install projector. It's a, like through the Python like module and it will download idea and then you load everything. So this is, this is the, the, the thing, right? So, yeah. so, I think... so judging by the, judging by the comments and chat, so Elod Barrios and Godmore, they both were very impressed. So it looks like uh, the, the first and foremost thing we wanted to do was like pitch records and then maybe growl. But at the moment, we're just making free, giving free advertisement <laughs> to JetBrains because it is, it is pretty cool the way it works. Yes. So to dial that back, to dial that back, to dial that back, let's do this, right? Uh, we wanted to work with Java 16 because that's where the records has landed. And the released version of IDEA doesn't yet have support for Java 16, right? So we are running here, what we are running here is an early access preview version, which is an experimental software that can contain uh, issues and errors, <laughs> which we might find or might not. But I'm actually, I'm very surprised that this works uh, and kudos to JetBrains projector team for making this happen. Uh, so let's, let's go back to Java and records, Nikolai. Yeah, um, can you, can we, I'm, I'm, so I only see, by the way, just FYI, at the moment I just see the, the, the window that says repository at the top left and clone and cancel at the bottom right, and I don't see any IDE behind that. It's just like a lot of green. So I'm not sure where to click now. Should we cancel this or should we no, no, no. control so, Should we put the URL here from GitHub? Yeah, yes, we need to put the URL here from GitHub. So Nikolai has prepared the project, sample project, with, which we are going to work on, right? Uh, and that is that is the that we need to clone now. Yeah, that's gonna... so that what goes there is the Git URL, right? Not the project URL, but just like the Git right thingy at the at the end. So let's clone. Yeah, that looks yeah. good. Let's I clone. I think so. And let me clone it into oh, yeah. the directory that I want. Right. So I want. <laughs> no, no. This is like let me let me let me think. Sure. This needs some social barriers. Streaming live streams, right? So here live streams and then Java after eight, right? So, oops. Hello. You put a C oh, there. No. Wait. So I, I can replace it if you want. Java after eight. eight. Yeah, that works well. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then here I will do. No, wait, wait, wait. Now it's weird again. It mentions chat Kotlin. Now it's a different thing. Set it up. Set it up. Set the URL again. Yeah, I will. I will paste it. So there you go. <laughs> right. So and all, now so I... all the people out there skeptical about. Shared working environments. You can start being Java skeptical again. <laughs> after eight, right? So I just want a, a certain location because that location is automatically mirrored to my GitHub. So you can run the uh, exclamation point repo in the in the chat, and you will get the link to the repository. So you can follow that. Uh, you can follow that. Did you have anything like that set up? No, I'm pretty sure you haven't because no, I'm not. I'm just going to write. I'm just writing to chat. I have to do it manually and paste the URL manually in chat. <laughs> I, I don't actually know if it works or not. Yeah, it works. So if you are asking, if you are wondering, right, and this is a, a honest plug, the bot that is running those responding to those commands is written in JavaScript, so it runs a Node.js application, and GraalVM on my machine here runs that Node.js application. It also Gradium runs the idea as well. So if you look at here, look here, if you look here, check this out. This is the amazing information here, right? You can see that this is the hotspot with JVMCI. This is the Gradium, uh, Gradium Java that runs idea. How cool is that? You wanted to plug Gradium? Here it is. Runs two applications on this stream. Great. Okay. Should we should we get to should we explain what the what the thing does? Yeah. Uh, take it from here. This is your sample project. So uh, go ahead and let's get into the application and then the records. 
Sure, okay, we'll do. So, uh, first of all, if you've heard this, uh, I've gave presentations like this, or, uh, or, or I used this code base in other presentations in the past already, and if you ever tried to actually clone it, you would see that the content was empty. I was kind of sheepish about putting my actual articles and talks here, uh, but since they're already online anyway, and even in source form, I actually now, you know, jumped over my own shadow and did it. Uh, so basically what this program takes as input uh, is in the content folder here. And that's a ton of articles that I wrote. Uh, and it's a ton of uh, talks that I, you know, that I gave and a bunch, not just the presentations actually. Um, and then videos here, uh, where because I put videos in my blog post, in my blog, in my blog as well. So this is the input. Um, it takes stuff like this. These are the actual files. So we open randomly, we open one. Uh, we will see here that it has some front matter that becomes important very soon, uh, meaning some initial key value pairs, right? What's the title of the article? What date was it written? With, you know, how's it tagged? Stuff like that. And then the text. The text is totally irrelevant for us here. Okay, so that's the input. Um, it takes this input, and what it tries to do is it tries to recommend other articles. So it's a recommendation engine. You assume you have read one of the articles. Now, which other articles uh, should you read next? Could be blog posts, could be videos, could be talks. All of these are in the recommendation engine treat together. So that's what this does. I wrote this as a demo for the different Java features, but it would it actually does its job, and I'm going to soon integrate it into my uh, into my blog for real. Okay, so how does it do that? Uh, first of all, it has to parse all of this stuff, right? Uh, oh, can we can we switch to the hierarchical layout? Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, in post we have a bunch of uh, domain classes, you know, that reflect what we see here. So uh, what we see here is an article. So there's an article class, and we can see that it has a title and tags and a slug and a description. And we can see a title and tag and slug in the description, you know, and a date. We use local date time from Java, so that's already there. Um, and some of these classes are very simple, right? Like a title is basically just a string, and we can see that here, the title is just a string. And then there's some extra stuff down here, we're gonna see that later. But for now, we just, you know, we have a single class for the title, so then that the article has proper typing, you know, it doesn't just use a string uh, and a set of strings and a string and a string. Uh, no stringly typed code here, so we have proper domain types here. So uh, the factories here are in charge of parsing all of that stuff and putting it into this uh, into these classes and populating them. And once we've done that, then starts the recommendation stuff. And since recommendation, you know, I thought the basic metaphor would be relationship between articles and who determines relationships. That's a genealogist. I had to look that up. Uh, <laughs> the German word is Ahnenforscher. Uh, so a genealogist is in charge of uh, checking, uh, dependent, uh, sorry, of checking relations. So that's what's happening here. There's an interface and it's very simple. Given two posts, please tell me how related they are. Um, the typed comes down to, we can have several genealogists. That's why this is an interface. One could look at tags. Another one could look at, the, you know, you could run a full language model and try to determine what anything is about. Of course we don't, uh, but we could. Um, and then, you know, to get an instance of this, you need the service. This is also an interface. And the implementations are decoupled. That's what the second project comes in. It's decoupled. We have them here. And uh, so here, for example, we have one, let's pick this one. This is the one we're going to use, the tag genealogist. It looks at the two post tags and then uh, determines how much they overlap, right? So if one, co if one post has three tags and the, the other one also has three tags and they share two of them, then they both get a score of two thirds times 100 or 67 or 66 or something, whatever. So uh, that's how we compute the score then. And the tech genealogist service simply says, okay, I'll give you back a new tech genealogist. So that's very straightforward. This code base as it is, it's still on Java 8. So it uses the meta inf approach uh, to, to register these services, but that's not very essential to what we're doing today. So let's just, let's skip past that. Um, once the you have all the posts loaded uh, and then you have all the, have the genealogists uh, instantiated and this project, this package, kicks into gear, a bunch of posts and a bunch of genealogists and a way to combine these. All of this, you know, then determine all the relations. That's what this does. It comes back with a stream of relations, which says, okay, this is what uh, these, how these two posts were related. This is the score that they get, the higher, the more related they are. And once we've done that, we can run this through recommendation. Uh, and the recommender just takes a bunch of relations. And then how many do you want to recommend per post? 
and then it spits out recommendations. So it says, okay, given this post, these are the recommended posts. Uh, so that's fairly straightforward um, from there. So the really, um, the, um, the, um, the interesting bit about this in the terms of what we're doing today is uh, how, we can, how we can use records to simplify this code base. As it is the code base, it's on Java 8. Uh, so the first thing we should do, or like, can you open the terminal or the, the embedded terminal? Because I can't. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's uh, Alt. It's Alt F12. If you are wondering. Yeah, it should be right. Is it, is it? It does work. That's like even the shortcuts work. That is somewhat surprising, actually. Okay, so this is Java 11. So that should work. Uh, we can run um, the Maven build, and then we can use a manual run uh, script. But we can just use the stats. Uh, method that I wrote, or a rather small script. It prints the Java version. You can see Graal here, by the way. Um, then it builds with Maven, and then it runs the app 10 times. Um, no specific reason. Uh, when we, For now, we don't need the 10 times. I'm just generally doing that to get a not totally uh, trivial performance measurement. And that has to go into really into scare quotes. This is not the way to do performance measurement, but that's why it runs it 10 times and gives some output. So this is kind of interesting for later. So we can keep in mind on Java 11, this ran in 2.7 seconds per run, and we had uh, 2,100 lines. Uh, so there's that. Okay, so now let's have a look and go to ah, the Git view. It works as well. Like every shortcut that I press and that works, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be positively surprised. So this is Java 8, as I mentioned. Um, there's an upgrade, upgrades branch. And that one, if we check this one out, now we're on Java 16 with all the things activated, but we don't actually want to do that, right? Because this already uses records and that's lame. So we go back to this one. We check out this revision. This is Java 16, but no Java 16 features. It just uses Java 16, but ignores all of the features. So if we go back here and then ask, oh, you're using SDK menu set, right? Yeah, yeah, of course I use SDK man and I have downloaded Java 16 there as well. So I can say so SDK list and then SDK use. Oh, sorry, just once should... probably Java sorry, what 16. You that one, 16 open. Like, I think one of our things is lagging. Either you're using the IDE, right? I'm still seeing the Git log. Oh, okay. I switched to the terminal. I'm using uh, the the the, uh, the projector app. Yeah, let me try again. I will restart my maybe it's something disconnected. I'll just keep going for then for yeah, a while. Yeah. So let's run this go. again. Now we're running this with Java 16. It uses all the fancy features up to 15, but runs on the 16 version that was released a couple of days ago. Well, I think the build is actually low older. Um, Unrecognized VM option, show detail, what now? Oh, or like we ran into the problem again that SDK man did not properly update the version. What? Um, so yeah, let me let me take the wheel here. SDK yeah, list sure. Java. Uh, let me just, let's make this window a little bit larger. All right, so we have the system it's Java. 16 this. up there, but I think it was like we had the problem uh, recently and it was because some Configuration script, put GraalVM first somewhere? Yeah, of course. Everything should put GraalVM first everywhere. <laughs> okay, point that's, taken. That's not, that's, that's not even a question, right? Um, right, my ID is lagging. I'm not sure what's happening. LS. Can you type something? Yeah, do I can, a, I do can. A, do LS. Well, you did a bunch of LS already. I can see the results, actually. I don't. Something is... Like my machine is dying. Maybe it's just the terminal that's not working so well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. A ton of LS. I see now like a ton of, like I'm seeing all the LS that I've done. Okay, so all you have to do is go into your bash RC and edit it without seeing it. That should should be straightforward. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, <laughs> SDK use Java. What we do? Sixteen open. Bash open. Yeah, but we did that already. I don't think it's gonna work. Which Java? Which Java? See? Interesting. Okay. Uh, so we go into the Bash or C file. Right? It it sits in the in home. What? Is that you? Is that me? No no I didn't do anything, but you probably hit yeah. 
Okay, this is going to be tricky. So now we go to BI. So uh, there's a decent chance that we're never going to get out of it again. Just FYI. Hey, palindrome. Right. Hi. Right, 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 right. D, D. Right, so we are here. So we want to edit this, right? And yeah, we I want think so, to. Yeah. And we want to. We want to. We want to. Can you press escape? <laughs> Maybe the Java home up there as well. Should we edit that as well out? I hit escape once. It didn't do much, I think. Did it? Right. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. We're still in insert mode. I told you we're not going to get out of this. God damn it. Right. Yeah, I know, how to, I know how to solve this problem. We just need to get out of the, like, editing mode. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this thing. Right? Terminate. That's how you exit so VI, if you want. If you want to. <laughs> yeah, you so just, we do, yeah, just let, close let's the terminal do, let's, let's do nano. Yes, right. If anyone of you JetBrains projector folks are listening to this, right? Escape doesn't work, and that prevents me from uh, being productive when I'm edit editing my. Uh, so J doesn't move things here, right? Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's big. It's the big VI money, right? You know, VI is like a big corp. I'm pretty sure they just uh, have a secret contract where they pay JetBrains millions, so they, you know. So block. we just do this, and then we do. Control X, save, yes. Okay, and then we do source, right? The same thing. Bosh RC. So now we do which Java? And we still have this. Try try to use SDK once more. SDK. Use. Oh, we can do like this works. So use. Which Java? God damn it. Java <laughs> minus, minus Yeah, Java version. forward mentions Java Home was indeed set still set to the old version, but Java Home is only used by Java itself. So uh Godward says we have to restart the cell. All right, God, he says it's not source is not going to remove the entry on the path. Oh, that's right, actually. We have to just use a new shell. Okay. Yeah, right. That should do, do it now. Uh, so yeah, forward. Uh, Java Home is indeed important, but only to Java itself. So the operating system couldn't care right. less what you put into Java Home. Right. So this is us because this is the default now, and we do we do use now. Sixteen open, Java minus version. Right. So we are now hey, with Java sixteen. That is spectacular, right? I'll take the wheel again if that's okay with you. Yes, that's that's how folks watching. That's how you enable Java sixteen on your system. It's not easy. It's not <laughs> whoa, easy. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait! I got, I'm contractually ob ob forced to uh, to uh, to counter that argument. We can, I cannot let that stand. Sixteen is very, very easy. Well, let's put it the other way. That was the hardest part of upgrading to Java sixteen, getting your terminal to do it. <laughs> right. No, no, no. You need to figure out the path, and the paths are always uh, like pain. Right? Yeah. So. I think the problem comes from 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 uh, Oleg putting Graal in the beginning of the path there. Yeah, because I don't use other JDKs, right? It's why would unnecessary. You? Why why would I? I have yeah. access to the best of the best, right? Yeah, except except yeah. Okay, anyway, so what we see here is a code stats already this the code is already like 200 lines if I remember correctly, less, about 200 lines uh, smaller. And runtime went down a bit, but once again, this is a horrible uh, performance measurement. So don't take anything away from this. Newer Java versions can be faster than older ones, but you definitely have to benchmark that on your own system. Uh, like this is like a horrible way to measure that. But it gives you some kind of indication that it can be faster at least. So great, uh, we're here now. Uh, we now are on Java 16. We have um, uh, we have the configure. I think the IDE is fine with it as well. Should we should we have a look at that? Let's see. We go here. Oh, this still says 11 though. So we need 16 here as well, I guess. So let's pick this one. And then uh, experimental features, right? Oleg, I guess, right? Yes, I accept. Okay. And because it didn't, shouldn't it have re-imported that anyway? Oh, it's weird. Because it's still stuck to... Oh yeah, it's project default. It's 16 here and here presumably as well. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see Let's see whether the ID is fine with the records. I hope so. So indexing starts. So um, 
Uh, Oleg, should we? Uh, do you want to start with Oleg? Uh, with Oleg, so with records right away, or should I give yeah. it? Give the first one a try. No, no. Let let me do that. I read a blog post about records, so I feel very comfortable using this uh, really, really not uh, like straightforward feature. Uh, so let's let's try to do this. Okay, right. let's start with this class then. Very good. So this is the repository class, and you can see that here. What we're gonna do? What we're gonna do? We're gonna create a record, right? We're gonna do public uh, record. I did one record yesterday. I did one record <laughs> yesterday. So just repository, right? And then we do this thing, and then we do string. Not sting. Sting is a string. Sting is a performer identifier, right? And then we do this, and then we can remove like a bunch of this, right? All this. Wait, but don't, don't, no, don't, don't, don't remove it as yet. We have to take a closer look, though. No, uh, no, no, no. I commented it out, right? So because I commented it out, right? So now we have the record, and this is the thing that the. Let's call it a component. So what should you what should you to define in the in the um, round parentheses or whatever you want to call them behind them after the name, those are called components. So we have one component called identifier of type string, and a component has for each component a bunch of things happen. So for example, um, you know what? Let, let, let's I, I prefer Why actually do it the other way. Let's uh, remove uh, the, the commenting here, doesn't work so with we can then. Oh, oh, yo, but I don't actually know what the command so, is for that. So can you remove the comment here? So I couldn't use that because I need to use the cloud machine. Coming in, you want me uncomment this uh, bunch? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so now we can go through this one by one. So for each component, what we get is a field of that name. So we don't need that field anymore. So you can kick that one out. Right. Um, let's leave the constructor for a second. Uh, we're going to get back to the constructor. Uh, for each component, you also get a getter or an accessor. Not a getter. Bad word. Yeah. An accessor. There is, no, there is no get. There is no get, which is very confusing to some people. But this is just... Exactly. There is no get. So the reason for that is that get... Um, usually in Java, when we think about object orientation, we think methods should do something. So there should be verbs. And I think that's the reason for this get and set nomenclature. But in this case, a, re a record really says, I'm, a, I'm just something for some data. I just collect some data. And that means um, it just doesn't, it doesn't do much. It just gathers data together. So you should access the data immediately, right? It's not get identifier. It's just the identifier of the record. OK, so uh, Oleg also kicked out equals and hash code because, and two string because all yeah. they did was like regurgitate the same stuff, right? Like let's use identifier for equals. Yes, you'd identifier for hash code. Let's use identifier and two string. Nobody needs that anymore. What yes, we're left that... with, with is the constructor because that actually does something that the constructor that we get does not do. So what we do here is we overwrite the constructor to have our own behavior as we want it. But we can make this a little slimmer Oleg, did you read about canonical constructors in that blog post? No, no, no. Okay. I'm a, before so we canonical... go up there, actually, like maybe you can educate me. So this is the the record. This is the syntactical sugar on the language level, right? I wouldn't call it syntactic sugar. It has a semantic meaning, but I let it. I let it go for yeah, now. Yeah, like, oh, we can discuss like that the, later. yeah. Yeah, there is a like a thing that I type in, and this is in the Java file, right now. Is there like a VM level construct called record, or is it just a normal class on the VM level, right in the bytecode? Ah, uh, okay. Like I'm giving you an code. answer. I'm about eighty percent confident in. Um, it's a normal class, almost. Uh, you can reflectively identify it as a record, but it's not a new VM construct, as far as I'm aware. If you so, if you want, if somebody wants to start betting money on this, they should look it up before. Right. So there is no like you know how there are like eight primitive types and a reference type, right? Yes. Uh, so there is no kind of like record reference type. No, no, that, I'm pretty sure that no. 
Right. So, so, okay. Okay. And so it's somewhere on the bytecode level, this becomes like a class, but with yeah. a, like special, maybe. Should we like, check? Bit set. Yeah, should we, we can check? check it. Because yeah, we if we look into target, we should see it here, right? It should be. I think we need maybe to clean or something, no? Or build or whatever, right? Then maybe, yeah. Let's let's do a rebuild project, maybe. Because this is very interesting. Because if this is just a purely like, purely class level like construct, right? If 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 it's actually just a class, um, then it's one thing. But if it's actually if there is like a VM support for the like records, uh, then maybe it's another thing. I'm not sure what I'm meaning, but... Um... Yeah, so um, the problem is that possibly the, fa the decompiler was uh, clever. Uh, um, so we have so many records are not uh, the same as the value types. Uh, from not Uncle. the same. And not so same. Uh, he says, yeah, there's a record attribute in the class file, which identifies the class as a record class. So that, I think, confirms what I was trying to, 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 uh, to say, which is uh, it's not a new construct. It just uses the existing machinery for everything. It just marks itself as being a record. Um, right. But it's not it's not anything like it's not like for example like Valhalla introduces value types they're like a huge change within the VM uh, because the VM treats them differently but records are just treated like regular classes they just know that they came from records right so and I've heard that records are kind of like like how you call them shallowly unmodifiable meaning that the when you, once you construct the record you you cannot like change values yeah. within that record. You so can the change terminology... values that like that the record contains within, right? If you like assign an array there, you can change the array values, right? But you cannot change the actual like record. Yeah. So the terminology is uh, right, shallowly immutable. Actually, that's the terminology, and it's. But you're exactly right. So this identifier can never be reassigned. It's assigned during construction, and it's going to stay that value. All you could do is to try to get. You know, not you don't use the get word, but you could use the accessor to get the instance ident of the identifier, and then try to mutate that. With string, you can't. So this is actually immutable because string is immutable. Uh, well, leaving aside reflection and stuff. But um, if you, for example, repository would contain a list of strings. So just for fun, let's try this. So if you put list here, uh, and if we could type this out without too many mistakes. Oh, 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 no. Shit, this is going to be a big problem. I'm going to control left, right a whole lot, and apparently it doesn't do exactly what I thought it would. Um, so if we do this, you can then call identifier and say well, clear, for example. Right. So that's what 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 Alex Manway said: shallowly immutable. So the record itself, you cannot change those fields. You cannot reassign them. But if the fields contain a reference that is mutable, then you can go all in and you mutate that, which is. I would say not ideal, but yeah, it works. Can I change those with reflection? Actually, that's that's a good point. Uh, record fields are final, but they are like truly final. They're like final final. So not even reflection can change these final fields. <laughs> can I change them when it was unsafe? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> I mean, like I can get an unsafe and the offset to the record and then like write something into the memory, right? I, I, I'm not going to answer that, and the main reason for that is I don't really know. Uh, I hope not, uh, but I don't know what. Like, look, I'm like learning what what you can break with unsafe is like learning how I can break into a building. Like, it's not a it's not a totally unreasonable skill to have. I'm just not interested in it very much. I think he knows. <laughs> I think he knows. I think he knows, but he just okay. So should we keep safe. going? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the one string identifier. So we have a record, and it generates us the accessor methods and the constructor and the equals and the hash code and the copy method. Copy method? No, there is no copy method. There are no copy method, right? So no, that no might have method. been that might have been like Lombok or Kotlin <laughs> data class or Scala data cl uh, case class, right? One of those, which are very similar to Java 16 records, have the copy thing, right? Yeah, so because it's uh, very useful. Like, how do you copy a record? Um, at the moment, you would copy a record just like you would copy any other uh, instance. You would, for example, create a copy constructor or a static factory method that creates a copy. I think the wider question here is: um, if I have a repository that has like five components and I want to start um, 
having the same repository, so the same, basically a similar instance with just one of those five components changed, then what do I do? At yes, the moment, was, there's no language level support for that. At the moment, there's no language level support for that. So you would actually have to have a copy constructor that takes four of those, uh, that takes a, re a repository and then maybe one additional component value that you want to change. There is, uh, so the obvious answer is why Why does the compiler not create with methods? Like that's what they're usually called, right? So that's, that's what they could call them withers. So what you could have, for example, as a public, let's see, repository, that does not make any sense here because it just has one, one um, component anyway. So you might as well create a new repository, right? But let's assume, well, let's just put one on here. Let's just say we also have a string foo here. And then we want to say with identifier. So you can call an existing repository that has an identifier as a certain value and foo as a certain other value. You could fall with identifier. What you want to have back then is you want to get a new repository that has the new identifier, but also has the old foo. Uh, oh, damn it. That was control. If you see me flipping through windows, that's the reason. But right, so why does that not create these withers? Well, um, the reason is that the, there's, there's more hiding here uh, as a general feature set than just having these with methods. So um, the team around Brian Gertz decided instead of committing to a specific way of doing it now, like generating the with methods, there is most likely, uh, there are most likely a different approaches, more powerful approaches to this will be uh, considered in the future and hopefully implemented at some point. Uh, and then we will get something like this with this, uh, maybe on language level even, uh, some languages have keywords for that, right? Uh, where C Sharp, I think, where you can say, okay, I want to create an instance like that one, but with these and these differences. Not sure uh, how far uh, there's progress on that. I think as far as I know, there's, uh, it's not even in, there's not even a draft job. I'm pretty sure of that. So um, and this will st still in the future. So for now, uh, all you can do is do it manually, really. So you ha would have to write these methods manually, or maybe an IDE can generate them, actually. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. This is fine. This is a like a decent decision. We can always add more code uh, to our classes and records, right? Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not like it's not like IDEs or don't know how to generate code. They were yeah. able to generate getters, setters, hash code, and equals before, and now they will just generate with identifiers. Yeah, I think and I think it's important to not to commit uh, to a solution too early. At least that's what Java yeah. does, right? Java is conservative yes. in that way that um, let's do the thing that we're convinced is good now. And if we have other ideas that would work well with that, let's, let, you know, let's take it one small step at a time, specifically with the new release cadence. That's a, it's a chance here, actually. Because in the past, maybe if with the three years between releases, maybe records would have probably, you know, would ship with more already. But that means that then less of the feature was actually used in, used in, 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 the, in the wider world out there before those decisions have been made. So this is actually a great way uh, to, put, to create, a, create a feature, put it into the hands of people, see it used, and then based on usage and based on that experience, have a better, more informed uh, process to make uh, to, to build no newer features on this. Yeah, I, I mean, so, like in the past, in the past, the feature like records would never be able to ship because the the team would have work, like day and night work on the uh, fixing the security issues in the Corba. That's what I've heard from from online sources. Because like the current like success of the new release cadence model is only because we could have modularized the JDK. And now the team is not fixing the issues in Corba, uh, security issues that is. Yeah, and whether that um, is true or not, like I don't know, but uh, that's what I've heard. So hooray to uh, not fixing security issues in Corba, and instead <laughs> concentrating on exciting projects like delivering records or uh, Loom or Valhalla. Yes, Loom, please. Like all of them are interesting and I want all of them, but Loom, like I, I really like that Ron Pressler is so transparent on what he's, what he's doing and he's so active in different communities, but also Ron, if you're listening in, can you please just work on Loom? We all need that. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's keep going here though, uh, because we can make, we can change this for the uh, constructor. In, uh, it in wasn't a small me way, that. that is, I didn't say um, that. That I, th I think um, is fairly interesting and a little subtle. So look, um, we, you just deleted all the stuff that we get for free: the field, the accessor, hash code equals two string, all of that. 
Um, also, we don't technically need a constructor. We only have one here because we want to do these extra checks. Now, that is not uncommon, right? We often want to do extra checks. If we have a repository with one component here, a record with one component, then, you know, listing that component here again is, eh, it's not ideal, but, you know, it's not a big deal either. But if you have like 10 components here, which we probably shouldn't, but if we would have, then repeating those 10 here makes really obvious that why do we need to do that? Like, that doesn't, doesn't the compiler know that a record has a constructor which takes all the components? Because it needs one. It always has a constructor that for all the components. And that one is called the canonical constructor. And this is what it looks like. If you just write public, then the name of the record and then the curly braces, what you're doing is you're overriding the so-called canonical constructor. Or strictly speaking, you're not overriding it. You're prepending some code. That's, that sounds more complicated than it actually is. What that means is this code is run before the fields are assigned. And that's why we get a compile error here because we shouldn't actually assign the fields in the canonical constructor. So let's remove, oh, damn it, the control arrow keys again. So let's do that. And now this is, this is the same as it was before. So in this canonical constructor, you can just, you just leave out the, the, the uh, parameters. You just take in, you assume that they are there and you just do all the checks that you want, but nothing else. Like you don't have to list the ones that you don't care about. They will just be passed through through the fields. This is the minimal way to write uh, um, and to express that your constructor only touches, you know, these, this field is just one here in this case, of course, um, and, you know, looks at that one. Right. I have a question here. Can you? Right. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the fields are written into the repository record before this code is called, right? I think, I think after. So, so this code operates on the, on the power, on the like arguments, right? On the parameters. Yes. On the Sorry. constructor arguments. Exactly. Right. But oh, yeah, the sorry, object, definitely, it but, runs definitely it, before the fields are assigned. I'm, I'm sorry, so, it's not just... It, uh, yeah. But the object is created, right? Yeah. So if you throw an illegal argument exception here, then you will sort of get it like a dangling repository record in the heap somewhere. So can we, like, add, the final, can we add the finalize here? Um, that's the case with um, with every time you throw an exception from a constructor, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like there is, yeah, yeah. Of course. But in the, in a normal constructor, you can assign things to the fields and then do like stuff, right? And here you do stuff and then you assign fields, right? Um, so like if, yeah. if this would be my constructor, I would do this here, that like. This identifier equals identifier. Oh, really? Does this work? No? Yeah, it doesn't work uh, because we can't, yeah. we, we're not supposed to, but I wouldn't actually. But, let, let, but you can, right? But yeah, but it's not the normal way to do this. That's, but, but let's keep it there. Uh, wait, wait a moment. Let me. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just asking. Just like, just because I'm curious. Like, I didn't know. Like, and also we can yeah, see that I, you, I... Can, you can do the finalize. So the finalize it lives through the records. You still shouldn't do it, but you can. <laughs> Let's have a look at line eight here again. Uh, if we do this, this is this is the way I would normally do this. This is what require non null is intended for, for exactly this uh, way to write to put this. And that means that you will get the exceptions during construction. So yeah, before yeah, the like, fields are assigned. But this. Yeah, but this also throws an exception, right? That's what it's yeah, there but for. Like, this one what's, throw... What if it's blank? But that doesn't matter. The, the point stands, the, um, if, it's now, the, if, if, if it's, it's now, if you throw an exception during construction before you're done assigning the fields. Yeah, yeah. I hear you do, you do it during construction, but after you assign the fields. No, 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 no. Require non-null throws a null pointer exception if identifier yeah, yeah. is null. But like, I mean, illegal ag argument exception. But where's the, where's the difference which kind of exception we throw? Yeah, like yeah, but like, I, mean, was, I mean, with the with, record, with the record, I only do all this code and then assign fields. Yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> I mean, just but, just asking. 
I, I didn't yeah, know no, that. sure, you're right. But what, what I'm trying to say, and I think I think that didn't, that didn't sure didn't come across. What I'm trying to say, like um, this is like the way that you write classes usually when you use require non noun. I was actually curious. Uh, you get the same like, behavior. If you use like require non noun as it's intended know. to be used, then you get also get the same behavior where before the fields are assigned, you throw a runtime exception. Um, so that's that that's right. So the code that was there beforehand observed the same behavior that it can throw runtime exceptions before the constructor was finished running. Yeah, very good. Okay, let's go let's go to a description. Yes. Uh, because there's something interesting going on there. First, uh, you have to turn that into a record now. <laughs> right, I know that. So this is my wait record. And then I need to do here this string text. Actually, you know what? I'm lazy like that. Yeah, but you can't because it's the experimental projector version, which is not yet. It's not that no. year, there yet. That's unfortunate. Replace. Yeah, have you checked? What, what Oleg is looking for is the automatic refactoring. It does exist in IntelliJ in recent versions. A projector is a bit behind, right? So that's why it doesn't work. If it would work, it would already no. highlight the class name. It would tell, no, it, no, tell no. you. This is the EAP. E -E -E no? Yeah, but look, but you no, know, like, remember when it was in the project view, it didn't list 16. So I think it's related to that. I think this specific version accepts when you write out record, but it does not contain the um, um, the full support for it, for, for 16. Yes, I'm so, so silly. Yes, okay, yeah, I got it. I got it. This is my bad. I Yesterday I downloaded the EAP, right, as well, which is supposed to have like full support for records and everything, because that's the version that uh, IntelliJ IDEA will release like in a week or so, right? And this is of course not it, because I forgot that they started a different one. We can restart, yeah. but I don't think it matters, right? So let's let's do it by hand, right? So we do string uh, text, and we do this record, record, uh, and we delete this. <laughs> Control D is duplicate. Nice. <laughs> Control D is duplicate. We do like this, right? Yeah, you run into the same problem. That's always one of the first things that I change. Description. Actually, this one we do, but we do delete that thing, right? And yeah. then we do text is deleted. This we don't need. Unquoted text. Maybe this. Yeah, let's let's would... let's go back to that. Actually, you can, let's yeah, delete let's the do... other stuff because we don't yes. need that. And let's we go back here. That. That's why I wanted to go into description, because what we did earlier is in the other constructor we checked the field for certain properties. And if it didn't have them, we throw an exception. But here we're doing something differently. What we're doing here is, and that's on line 13, we're removing the quotation marks. So that yes. means what we want to do is, we want to change the parameter, the, the argument that comes in, we want to change that before assigning it to the field. This is what this constructor used to do, right? It took the text, it made it unquoted, it checked whether the unquoted one was not empty, and then um, it was done. But we can't quite do that here. Nope. <laughs> so the way to do this is we have to, and uh, it, it pains me to say that, we have to reassign the argument text. So the solution would be that, exactly that one. Oh, this is so neat. And now that means that the argument text was changed during the, you know, this piece of code, and then later that will get assigned. Because uh, later it does this text equals text, exactly. right? Sort of like this thing. Yeah, oh, that happens automatically. This is so, so beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful, chat? I think it's magnificent. Yeah, no, this is like... cool. Can I now, can I, like, if I want my records public, every record needs to sit in a separate class, right? I cannot, I cannot do, like, nice things like public record uh, person, right? No? Can I? I cannot. That's a shame. Because look how consigned that is. So, like, I could have my model in one class with multiple records, but I cannot. Yeah, so that's the old limitation, right? Just one public top-level class per source file. Yeah. That's the existing yeah. limitation was not lifted here. But but this is that would be so so cool because can you like you imagine the code? It would be so neat then. Like boom, records going there. Some of them with the constructors like that, right? This is the 
canonical constructor. Yes. No. Yes, the canonical constructor. And that would be so, so nice. Oh, wait, you know what I just realized? I'm so like, it is, it is the canonical constructor because it's the one that takes all the arguments, but because it doesn't have the parents, and that was actually a misspoke there, that's, it's called compact. It's compact if it doesn't have the parents here, like if you, if we get rid of those because we don't want them. And it's yes. the canonical one if it's the one that takes the exact same list of arguments. So you would say that this is the can, oh, control V. Well, how does that not work? Never mind. Change text. So you would say that this is the uh, canonical constructor, and then this uh, is the compact constructor. So sorry about that, by the way. I just I just uh, confused the two terms. It, like it's not overly important to get this hundred percent right, uh, but it should be right when while I teach it at least. <laughs> okay. Um, if, so if anyone is wondering, by the way, why Nikolai cannot seem to do basic text editing things here, is because I'm on a Mac. So the key map here is a Mac one, right? And he's on Linux. So I use command where he uses control. Uh, and some of the like key binds kind of work and some of them do not, which yeah. is unfortunate. Like control left, right. For me, that means jump a word. And for you, that means go to the next tab, which for me is control page up, down. So yeah, like if you look, if you work a different keyword, key mapping, sorry, a different key mapping, you always look like a derp. Like, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to type. Like, look, you, you're always... fine. You are fine. You're fine. I couldn't exit Vim. So <laughs> you, like, it, it's very hard to go like lower than that, right? No way. But you know that that's, that you know that tons of, do you, know, you know the joke? There was a guy on Twitter, like, I love that joke. I've been using Vim for 15 years, mainly because I don't know how to quit it. I love that one. Um, Okay, so we learned here how to uh, not only check stuff uh, in the constructor, uh, but also how to how to change it, how to reassign it. We could actually just go one step further and make this a bit simpler and just say, screw that. Uh, we're just going to have text here. All right. You know what I should do? I should probably just put uh, like, a, like one of these uh, thumbnail needle thingies onto my control key so I stop hitting it. <laughs> thumb text. Thumb text. That's the word. Okay, good. I think, um, I think I think Twitch should ban you for violence. Uh, let's go sorry. to tag here. <laughs> I'll do it let's for once. Drop the topic. Yes, do the tag. Do the tag. I will see how the master does the record conversion. Yeah, I, I use IntelliJ normally, <laughs> just just as you try to. Okay, so what we have here then uh, is a collision. Uh, first of all. Well, we don't need this, right? We don't need the string text. We already fi uh, figured that out. Um, but we still get an error. And the reason for that is this constructor used to be private because what I wanted people to do is use the static factory method instead. So of course I can add methods, you know, to, to records exactly the same way that I can, can add methods to any other kind of type, right? So that's normal behavior. But uh, so I can just have static factory methods and that's good, I guess. That's normal, right? But what you cannot do is lower the visibility of this canonical constructor. And the reason for that is that uh, a record says the API is the state, the whole state, and nothing but the state. There's an immediate one-to-one -one relationship between the state, meaning the components of a record, and its public API. And the constructor is part of a public API, which means there has to be a public constructor that takes all the components that has to be there. So this has to be public as well. So that means now people can pick either my constructor or my static factory method, which in this case is okay, I guess. But let's go somewhere else where it stops being okay. And that would be in config. If you look into config, what we see here is the config is once again very record-like. It just bunches a bunch of, of paths together it's when you launch the app, it needs to know where to find articles and talks and videos or where to write the output file. I never showed you that, by the way, but never mind. The recommendations, the result of that. Uh, we'll see it later. So this is also a good record, actually. It just, just contains these things, get, gets access to these. Nothing spectacular going on. The reason why it's so long is because it takes a little bit of time, uh, sort of time, a little bit of effort to actually, you know, put these paths together because they're read from some kind of uh, configuration file or maybe from the arguments. This is the arguments were passed to a public main. Here we can see that here. So we can take the arguments here. 
and then gets passed on to the configuration. So the configuration tries to create itself <clears throat> by looking at that and then potentially loading from a file, which is why it uses a completable future. So the construction of this is a bit more, com more um, uh, involved. And that means that I actually do want people to not use this constructor. So let's, let's get there. Let's first turn this into record. Let's like usually I do some clever multi line editing here. Oh, damn it. I cannot control X. Can I move lines? No. Um, <laughs> can you turn? Can you put this into the component list and then we remove the private and the final and. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I think it's control. No. Well, you probably command shift up or something like that. What is it? No. Let's do I think I remapped that too as well. Oh, it's Alt Shift. It's Alt Shift on my machine. Alt Shift. Ah, it's no, it's moving lines. Okay. No, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah. Right. So we are. Oops. We're doing this, and then what? Let's remove all this. Like. Read folder. This is static method. This is the we need to change this file, right? This thing, right? So let's remove that. Let's remove this article folder. Why is this fine? Why is this fine? Uh, because what we what we're doing here. That's interesting. Good question, actually. Um, so the constructor that we're working on here is not um, it's not a compact constructor. So the constructor that we have here um, is just an additional constructor. Right, so we're providing an additional constructor, but still it doesn't work because um, we have to immediately call the other one. So we must delegate to another constructor, and you know, the constructor delegation has to happen on the first line. So yes. this doesn't really work. So what this le leaves us with is, if I may, um, we can just turn this into a method. So let's just yeah. have... Pub, right, oh sorry, the, the first S was mine. Yeah, turn this into yes. a... Into a uh, um, static factory method. Create raw from raw. Raw. This is excellent. Raw. This is excellent, right? So, and then then we do uh, we replace this with var, right? Var, yeah. var, and then var, and then var. No, no, wait, wait. This one, there were not. That's just one of reassignments. I think at least the second one wasn't. Our output file is output file. Uh, we have to inline something this. here to work. Shit, we have to what, think, Oleg. Uh, what is this output file? Where it does it? Can you control from? Z out of that? We have to. I think it works if you just inline something. Um, let's no, no, see. Like, what's this output file? Okay, it's here. Let's do one. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, var. so no thinking then. <laughs> var. And then output file, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. no, no. Of course we can inline this, right? So refactor inline, but I don't think this is a very good, uh, very good like output file. No, no. Let's not do that. This was nonsense. Okay. Output file one. Roll links. Output file. Output file one. It's okay. We'll just keep it as is. It's, 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 we no, can no, live no. with it. Optional. I've been said that. We should actually uh, optional. Optional means it could be there or could not be there, right? So we should actually show kind of sort of the best practices or at least like decent practices uh, on the stream. I think that was the uh, one piece of feedback and I think that is a very reasonable piece of feedback. So we renamed the file from uh, to have a decent name. Okay, should I? That is, um, yeah, yeah. So Continue. what I called that, I called that output file name, by the way. That's interesting discussion. Should we put optional into the file name? I wouldn't, just like I wouldn't put list or array in the file name. I wouldn't put optional there. Uh, so I called this locally, I called this output file name. Well, with a lowercase a, of course. Uh, um, so that's that. That's what I used here. Oh, control V doesn't work either. What the hell? <laughs> Command. Oh, of course, because it's control, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to get the the Mac keyboard there, <laughs> right? That doesn't matter. Okay, file name. It's good. Good with me. Okay, great. Good so one. what we have here now though is uh, well, we still need to return the instance, right? We still need to return uh, the new config uh, 
with all the things. Is there a list? Sometimes, sometimes IntelliJ recommends the list if it finds it, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. It's sometimes really clever. It gives you like the entire comma separated list just there. Why does control space work though? Because it's also control space on, on my end. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Here's what I was trying there are to do. There are two content assists, one of them more intelligent and one is them is less intelligent. So I have control space and command space. And one of them oh. works for you. I think the the less intelligent one works. Yeah, you gave me the dumb one, right? You're like, let's let's not make it too hard for Nikolai. Uh yeah, I, I'm not sure. But this is uh this is good. Actually, this goes better than I expected. Yeah, it does. It does, really, it does. And I mean, like, the, the issues that we encounter come down to uh, different operating systems have different key maps. Like, if you actually want to do this, like, in real life constantly, then you'll probably just decide to pick a key map that is not that reliant. Um, so here we have to call not new, but create from raw or something, right? By the way, you picked a great name. I think that's actually, that's almost the name that I picked as well. Like, good naming there. And what I want to do now is, uh, well, we, have, we have a situation here now where a user... Sorry, abs can I ask a stupid question? Can we still run this? Yeah, I wish like it be. It compiles, so it, it runs, right? That's, that's the, the idea. Yeah. Do the running. Let me, do the running. Let's we get see there. if our refactorings work. Before we do that, let me, let me, let, let's me let finish up with this class because that's was one thing I want to point out. So um, users of this class are supposed to use this static factor method to create it. Like this, this is not just really optional. We really want them to do that. And they might end up in some situations where you feel like, well, I, I know I have to have this public constructor here. This one, this is implicitly there, right? Like there's nothing we can do against it. This one is implicitly here. But I don't want people to. And this is not a recommendation of what to do. This is just a description of what I did. Uh, what is it called? From raw or something? Create from raw. No, uh, the other one was... Um, Secondary package the methods instead. You can make it a Java doc probably, and then link to the bo to both of them. Yeah, I think um, you can just throw the uh, throw the exception. No, 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 throw we cannot. The exception. Of course you can. You check the stack trace, and if it doesn't come from the factory method, <laughs> you throw the exception. Don't listen to Oleg. We're supposed to teach good practices. Remember? <laughs> I I think that's very like like look. You look. You don't even have to like look at the whole stack. You use the stack walker to walk like just one method back, right? And then if it's not is the factory method, then you throw an exception. Because imagine then, then anyone who's using that config who doesn't have the source or the Java doc, so like a normal developer, That's... raise your hands in chat if you always read Java docs to any method that you're calling, like type one. Well, it is deprecated, right? So it like it shows up with the, with the, with the line through, but I get what I... you're saying. We could we could go further and protect this one, um, but yes. we shouldn't because when you when we do what you describe, for example, a deserialization framework could also not create instances of this, right? So this is this is a this is an. Um... So not only we not only we protect from accidental usages on the developer side, <laughs> right? But we also <laughs> enable better security, but disabling random deserialization of random classes. I think that is a wonderful idea. What's, what's the phrasing that the, that the English people, English speaking people tend to use? Let's agree to disagree. I think that's the one. <laughs> if throwable? No, yeah. What? I, no, I, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. At least use the stack walker then. <laughs> I, I wanted, but I can't, couldn't remember the API. So I think, I think it it's was stack walker. I think it was then, added in Java 9, right? Yeah, it's stack walker, yeah, yeah. get instance, and then Just... walk, and then we can do stuff here. Yes, and I, I am on Java 8. I'm on 11, but I never use stack walker. Right, so people in the chat, this is what you might want to do if you want to increase the security of your, um, of your code, according to some experts. Wait, so, whoa, so, don't drag me so, into this. I would, I would so, not recommend that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't do that. Don't do that. Nikolai doesn't approve that. Uh, um, right, so this is actually, I'm not even sure whether this is officially sanctioned to deprecate this constructor for those reasons. So I'm already feeling like I'm going out on a limp here. But that's what I did uh, because I felt like I wanted to. To make it even, to make the line red. It used to be like, it's a yellow line or a red line depending on the for removal in IntelliJ, I think, right? Okay, but you wanted to run this. Let's give this a go. Uh, you can just go yes. to the terminal and execute stat, stat, stats sh. It compiles and then runs. 
Oh wait. Okay, sorry. Uh, stats, right? Stats. Stats. That's a okay, good sign. It takes building. that long and runs we're, the tests. That's a good sign. We are building and then it processes things. There you go. Oh look, it got a little bit slower. But I don't think it actually it actually because of the refactoring, so I think it's just the the cloud machine that I'm using got a little bit low to or something like this. Yeah, so I would assume so as well, right? So even even already running this locally with like OBS running, what I usually do is when I demonstrate this, that already fluctuates like that like just obs which is live encoding is already stressing the system in a way that makes these performance measurements useless and i guess in the cloud you're in a similar situation uh we're just not sure whether there's other load on the same you know on the system or something so whatever it's doing in the background like usually you want to do you want to do extra performance testing you want to make sure that basically nothing else is running on the system not because that's realistically what you would have in production as well you probably won't but because only then can you be sure that what you measure is actually a consequence of what you're doing and not of some other random operating system stuff uh, or just other applications that, that are running. Nikolai, um, just Nikolai cause, didn't go um, with this disclaimer. The, the performance behavior. Didn't Why go with the disclaimer that? when he showed the Java okay, 16 uh, let's is do faster. More. Let's go to right? Slug. But let's go to the that's um, also to the applicable class there. That's called Slug. Let's go to Slug. 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 <laughs> let's not comment on that. Slug. Uh, my keyboard is behind my microphone, so I barely see what I'm typing. Okay, let's go here. Oh, damn it. Um, let's do this again. Uh, right, control so... slug has a Wait. string. Oh, you do let that. Me, you do. Let me do that. String, string value, right? You know how some annotations have the default value thing, right? Yeah. An, an annotation has the value. Public, we we want to remove this altogether. We will use the compact constructor and then we just don't need this, right? We don't need this. We don't need, we compare to, well, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's these compare it. to there. Yes, let's delete those things. This is really, because really good. I, I like how like less verbose the code gets. It's just like with Lombok at data annotation, uh, very similar. So the, the cool thing about this is, um, and that's 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 a thing to say uh, about Lombok as well and about records. Uh, both of them have this thing that yes, they make the code less verbose, but that's just a consequence, at least for records, definitely because I know that better. It's just a consequence of something else, and the consequence, uh, the, the, the the something else is, as I mentioned earlier, record have a semantic meaning, and I already mentioned the API is the state, the whole state, and nothing but the state. When you write record, you're not just doing that to get rid of boilerplate. When you use the data annotation or when you use a data class in Kotlin, you're hopefully not just doing that to get rid of the boilerplate. You, you're expressing something to your colleagues and to the compiler and the VM. And what you're saying is, this thing is just a collection of data. This is what you're expressing. And the fact, that fact then leads to the compiler being able to say, aha, I can remove everything else. And then serialization framework can be like, aha, I can deal with this better. Um, so that's very important. It has a semantic meaning first. And the boilerplate reduction is a consequence of that. And the good, the important part about seeing it that way, it keeps you from using records where you maybe don't want to reuse it, right? So if you have something where you feel like, well, I have this, I still have this one private field. How can I get a private field without an accessor in a record? If you're thinking that you went down the wrong road, it's not a record then. Not only because the compiler forbids it, it's not a record because then it's not just a collection of data. Then suddenly it is something that needs encapsulation. And if you're in a situation where you need encapsulation, you're not using, you shouldn't be using a record. And that's very important. Um, but what I want to show here is that, of course, you cannot just add static factory methods. You can do more stuff. You can add all kinds of methods, of course, and you can use many standard uh, class building features like implementing an interface. So that's what I want to show here, right? So you can still have records that, in this case, for example, implement an interface. So this one is comparable by comparing slugs. Right. And it works the same way as, like, normally would do, so I can just... Uh remove this this here for example right and the right value uh i can still do that i don't have to have the method called here yeah that it's the same as cool. with uh yeah it's the same as with uh you, you you're in the same class right so you have access private access to or you have access to private members of the other instance 
Right, right. Very cool, very cool. Can I... Uh, since my slug here is... Uh, it has hash code, right? And it has the equals, right? So what yes. I can do, I can do public, right? Static. Map. Slug. Uh, object. Right? Uh, private. Field. <laughs> one. New like, hash working map. on Graal broke you in some way. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> and this way, like, I can encapsulate my private field, right? And then I just do the, the, uh, public <laughs> private field one, right? And pretend that this is just my, like, pretend get this, right? People tried this when Lambdas came out, and they soon realized that it doesn't work well with stateless Lambdas. Um, um, here, the only argument against that that I have is you're abusing once again a feature that's not supposed to, but I think it would technically, I, I think would guess, would just it could work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Looks ugly. Well, though, nah, so. well, well, does it though? I mean, the slug uh, is. Uh, you kind of committed. You kind of committing yourself to uh, that. Each like all equal slugs will all have the same private field one. Um, yeah, because they yeah. are equal, right? Like you just you, equality is determined by all other fields except this one. Yeah. Right. Okay. But in um, the compare to, I can I can use that field as well, and then not only do this ugliness, but also break the equals compare to kind of co contract. Yeah, it's like it's more like a like a recommendation, but yeah, exactly. You would break that one as well. That would not be ideal. Uh, I have a question yes. about in in chat here uh, about equals and hash code and how they work, and we can go at that next. Let's. Uh, skip the next thing that I wanted to do. Let's go to article. I'm uh, at your command, article. Yeah, so in the beginning, once again, you have to put, it's a bit of work to um, um, to do the record thing here. Yes, uh, it's very tedious. I can see that. So wait, wait, wait uh, should I try to copy paste in from my end? But I can't paste, no, right? No, no, wait, that's I would. No, I want I to experience the, the whole. I want to experience the whole, uh, uh, like the whole. It's worse. Thing. We need the next two as well. Whoa, 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 yeah, we need optional repository and content as well. That's interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, it should like we shouldn't have optional fields. Blah blah blah. I like it. Uh, I think that is a uh, how do you call that? Uh, prejudice against the fields. I think if fields want to be optional, we should have them as optional fields. Right? I think so too. If they want to be like a stream, for example, like they can be a stream, right? So well, stream then... fields, those are dangerous though, right? Because remember, stream you can only value at that once. But yeah, I mean, like if that's your semantics, right? Some people say no, don't play with unsafe, don't run with scissors. But imagine you're on a in a forest on a hike, right? And then uh, you see a bear and you have scissors in your hands. Uh, are you going to run with scissors or not? Probably you will, right? Uh, Actually, the right, bear and... example is pretty good because you probably also want to keep the scissors around. Right, so we remove all the getters, right? Because we don't need them. We remove equals and hash. Do we? Oh, nope, 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 nope. You, don't, wanted, don't, you wanted don't. to show. Let me just... Yeah, exactly. Me... Yeah, just just like, you can just... We can kick out, kick out two string, two, uh, two string and let's comment them back in. Let's use uh, equals and hash code. Let's... let's, let's... Keep them where they were. Nice. Um, something is wrong about the, the definition up there. There's, there's a compile error up there. We have to fix that first. See, it's red up there. I'm not sure for whatever reason. Yeah, that's something. That's, um, can, you, can you go back though? Wait, let's see. Yeah, we're in the article. There is one related oh, it's, problem. Oh, it's, it's on a record. It's Sorry, I, I, got, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, you got it. Hey, record. you forgot the most important, like the, the, fun, the, the fun part. Right. Um, what's wrong now? Could have been a class. I feel like it could have been a class we just would call that record. Okay, there you go. Got it. Okay, so what I was trying to show here is we can still, and that goes back to uh, Ali Rutan's question, uh, we can still overwrite equals and hash code. By default, they use all the fields. But there are surely situations where you don't want that. Like in this case, 
two articles are equal. If you go back, right, uh, the articles are somewhere up here. Uh, two articles are equal. Well, if they have the same, then this is part of the URL, uh, which is, I think, a unique resource locator. So if the unique part of the resource is the same, then they should be the same article. So if all we need to determine equality or all we consider when determining equality of articles is just one of the components, one of the fields that are created from these components. And that's something that will come up you know, regularly. And in those instances, uh, you're free to uh, override equals and just use the fields that you want. A hash code then, of course, as well. So I hope that answers that question and also what we, um, what we touched on the, in the before. Okay, um, let me go back to something um, real quick. We talked earlier about um, adding adding methods, right? And one more thing that we can add or the one that we can override is the existing accessors. So just as we can override the uh, the object class, sorry, the class, uh, the methods from class, sorry, from object. The, the methods that are on object, we can override those. But of course, we can also override the constructors, uh, sorry, the accessors that uh, the record gives us. So let's look at recommendation. Uh, it's one again, once again, one of these very uh, boring thingies. So let's have a post, post, and list of posts, recommendations. We've done this a million times, recommendation. No, sorry, recommend, recommended posts actually there yeah, we no fields anymore and this ah, muscle memory is so hard to overcome i think that that, that uh the thumbtack to hurt myself would actually really help in this case that that would probably make me a faster learner than i'm at the moment wait wait what like let's do this properly can you can you can i yeah hands off on my end Oh, for me, it's still like I'm keeping up. It's like keeping up with the with Nikolai, right? Like, okay, so uh, key map, right? And then uh, key map. Oh no, you don't me. need to change the key map for me if you're looking for that. Don't do that. No, no, I, I, I'm gonna do that because I like you a lot. So we're gonna do what's copy, right? Con command C. So. We're gonna do this and press now your shortcut. Wait. Press whatever you press. Okay. Okay. And then we do the paste. Right? And then we do add keyboard shortcut and paste. And can Are we, we do like jump word or whatever that's called? Uh it's, I use it I use control and the arrow keys to jump from because that's what I'm what I'm right. what I'm hitting the most here. Line end. No, that's not. Maybe not. No, it's, uh, what is it? What is uh, it move carrot. Right? Backwards. Uh, line end, line start. Next word. Next word. It's all to right, uh, apparently. Yeah. At the moment. Well, let's do command right as well. Wait, well, it doesn't work. What? What now? Oh, I know why. Sorry, sorry. My fault. My, my bad. Uh, okay, I done it, done it. We've done it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if we even saved that or not. But I'm not doing that again. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so can. here's we something. Can. Here's something important going on. Let, let's look at this though. So earlier, I get the list of posts. Um, uh, I get a list of posts, right? That's my field. That used to be my field. Now it's a component. But that means that uh, the accessor will have the same type. Earlier, I didn't do that. So this is something I do fairly often. I return streams instead of collections when I don't want the consumer of the collection to edit it, right? If I want you to take my list of recommended posts and then put stuff in there, then I'm going to give you a list, fine. But if all I want you to do is to consume it in some way, I often want to give you something that's, you know, unmodifiable or shallowly immutable or however you want to call that, so something that you cannot play around with. I like to use streams for that personally because I think, well, obviously a stream tells you you cannot change this, you're not even going to try because you can't. And also, I usually want to stream anyway over those collections, so it's a very straightforward way um, uh, to give to have like a nice API. I like to do this. It doesn't work anymore though with records. Once again, the API is the state, the whole state, and nothing but the state. The state is a list, so the API must be a list as well. So we must do this. 
And that means then that here, I want to create, for example, a list dot copy of, of the recommended posts. Uh, so that would be one thing that you could do, because I still don't want to give you an, a copy that you can then edit. Oh, sorry, I still want to give you a version that you can edit. I want to give you an immutable version. <laughs> well, yes, uh, that would work as well, I guess. That's a new um, API in Java 16, I think. It is actually, yeah, it is, it is, you're right. Yeah, that's that's. I still, I still think the other one is more like more clearly expressing what my goal is. This looks like a mistake. Somebody could come in and just throw the stream of the two list away because they feel like, isn't that the same thing? Uh, but yeah, I get you, that would work as well. Now we get a related problem, of course. Uh, we could, but we won't. We could hunt down, hunt down the compilation error here. Um, because, you know, the consumer of this API expected, but right, so you have to put a stream there somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. That, that's already all we need to do. Um, okay, so that means you can override the accessors. You can, of course, do that. One other way would be to deprecate this one and then give one other back that's called recommended post stream, but I don't like that. Um, I can also so I think that's like do the overloaded methods here, right? So I can I can copy this, right? And have a if I want if I want I have the recommended posts with like integer i, right? Very good. Oh, it works. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. just like just this, like this, a this class. is normal like class building things that you can do. That's very cool. Okay, um, we're slowly coming to an end. Uh, let's talk about a few limitations. So we've already said fields are final, like for real. Like you cannot have you cannot have non-final fields. You cannot have additional fields. Um, if you try, you get into trouble. And then we already I mentioned that a couple times. Like it's not too not too bad. Hopefully to mention it again, which is the state is the whole the API is the state, the whole state, and nothing but the state. And this becomes important here. So if we look at this. Like it looks initially, it looks very similar, right? We have two fields. Uh, we have a constructor that takes these two fields. But when you look at the accessors, what you realize is that they do not expose the fields. They do use actually um, um, the encapsulation that Java usually provides. So this is a static factory method. The important one is this. Uh, these weights, what they mean is uh, given given a certain kind of, of, of genealogist that inferred relations between two posts, oh, now we have a bunch of them, we want to weight them, right? So you have one that uses tags and the other one uses maybe a text analysis and the other one could use a publishing date, whatever. And now we want to pull all of these different um, scores that they got together. And the way we want to put them together is you could just use all of, all of them are equal. So we just um, put them together each with the same weight, but maybe you want to weight one of those scores higher than the other ones. Maybe the one that is based on tags is more precise, so we want to focus on that one more. Um, but I don't want to expose this as it is, um, because the map might not contain all relation types. And then if you give me a relation type that is not in the map, I want to give you back the default weight. So of course the consumer of this API could do what I do here and use get or default. But I don't want them to. That's needlessly putting into the public API what I would usually encapsulate. So this class tells me I have two fields, but I have no accessor for either of them. Instead, I have a, a single method that combines them, or maybe I have, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. But the point is, if you do not expose all your fields with accessors, then what you have in hand is not a record, and you shouldn't try to make it one. This is a this is a class as it is, and we'll keep it as a class. So it's. Like, right, so it uh, um, doesn't misuse a record feature just to save a couple lines, right? So we can, oh, I don't want these lines, and I don't want these lines, and I don't want, well, this doesn't have equals. But if it would have, I don't want to have that either, so let me just use a record, and then I'm ignoring the fact that I don't really want to expose these. So don't do that. Don't use records for the syntax sugar. Use them for the, for the semantic meaning, and this one is not a record. I have a smart list here. What else? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, before we close, should we do some shenanigans? Yeah, absolutely. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna deconstruct some records using some. Cool no, no, no. I'm still, I'm still busy using records, but in a, in a way that's not maybe mainly immediately obvious. So somewhere here, right? Look here. We're turning a map entry. So what this does is it parses the front matter. If we go back to that, uh, oh, I can actually use Control Tab too. Some of them, some of the combinations work. 
Um, so these, the front matter, is always a key value pair. It's a key, it's a colon, and then there's some values there. And so that's, that's how they always work. Key, colon, value. So what this does is it takes a single line from the front matter, splits it on the colon, and then puts, you know, returns a map entry. Why does it return a map entry? Well, because I need to return two strings. And a map entry gives me a way to have to return two different things. I could re return a string array, maybe, but a string array doesn't tell me how many there are. So here I can rely at least on them there too. But that's not great. That's not what a map entry really is. Like in this case, you could squint and say, well, it's a front matter line. So that does have a key and a value. So it kind of is like, a, um, like an entry after all. But I think this is lucky that in this case we get away with that. Um, if you're in a situation that you want to return multiple values, Java did have nothing on offer for you. You would have to write your own class for that or abuse a class that is already there. With records, records are also called nominal tuples. Tuples meaning, you know, collection of other individual data points. And then it's nominal, it's named, it has a name, like other Java classes. So what we can do here is we can just introduce a record uh, we can go to, it's like what's the front matter line or something front matter line has a string key and a string value uh <laughs> no bad god warrior bad uh he he proposed you know what why don't you pass in two consumers here <laughs> so now we can return this oh damn it oh we did not save by the way uh so to answer that mm, So now we have to change the type here. Uh, that is not get key, but key. And then we do the same thing here from metro line value. There you go. So if you need some representation of data, like, um, a, pair. Well, like a pair, example, exactly. And you don't have to use, like, of course, like usually it makes sense to use like a general pair type, like a general tuple type because it's cumbersome to write these types every time you need them. But now it's a one-liner, and the advantage that this has... Well, it's still compile errors, but let's ignore that. Oh yeah, right, because we're returning the wrong thing here. Um, the, the beauty of this over a pair is that in Java, since we're usually naming things and identify things by name, this has a helpful and good name, right? Front meta line gives you some information, the reader of this code, uh, can you know can, can understand what you're doing based on that name? <laughs> we yeah, there seems is, to be somebody else very, locked. Very Sorry? cool point. Very cool point because you have you can have your named named like uh, small value not value but small like records and they are typed, which is which is uh, a very big plus. Very yep. big plus, the moderately big plus. That is cool. Let's use that here. Look at those. Okay, okay, let me do that. Let me do that. Yeah. Posts has two posts. That is a nonsense. <laughs> that is a static. Can a record be static? Uh, a record is always static. So the static, what does, what does static mean for inner class here? that it doesn't have the reference to the instance. Right. So usually when you create just if you run just public class posts and each instance has a reference uh, to the um, each instance has a reference to the outside class. Uh, you don't want that with records and you can't have that with records. Remember the API is the whole state, blah, 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 blah. So a record is always static. What are you doing here? What, what's, what's wrong with just writing post one, post two up there? No, no, no I want my, my variable links record, so to speak. Okay. Right. Uh, well, but I need this because this is my constructor, right? So this needs well, to you be can, the You can lengths. add constructors. So you can add an additional constructor. What you just had there was possible. So if you want to create an additional constructor that just takes two posts, posts you can do that. Wait, I, I don't need here anything, right? If this is my default thing, I don't need anything, right? So I just can't right, have yeah. the, my private posts, post one, 
post post p2 right and this is since this is my like regular constructor you have to write this now because you have to call the the canonical construct immediately no no not, not period just this and then open and close yeah right yes. and now you have to yes. pass the array array isn't it new array. string blah 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 isn't that what you're doing I don't know. Can, I, can I help you, maybe? P1, P2. Oh. To array. No. What am I doing? I'm not sure. Can I? Can, can I? List. Yeah, yeah. The, take it off me. Look, look. This is. I know it's black magic. Wait, what happened now? But you can just do this. Oh, sorry. Ah, damn it. Control backspace doesn't matter, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course I can do this. Yes, that's oh, a well, very simple syntax. Wrong parents, but... Um, I think, think going through list would be like more readable, but I agree. I agree. You created the array and you assigned And the other thing is that God mentioned, God Warrior said you could just do... A, uh, uh, you could just use this. So God Warrior is Jean Venet. He's also at Oracle. Uh, so he should know this. And if he doesn't, haha, <laughs> we can laugh at him. Because isn't this? Yeah, yeah. Look, it picks the same one again. This is uh, circular. It doesn't refer to the other one because this one is more specific than the var arcs one. Well, we can we can use the var arcs one by passing null as an additional argument. <laughs> um, that's that's not what it's supposed. Like, no, remove that null. We don't deal with nulls. I hey, what? No, stop, stop it. Uh, I, I need this, like, if we don't do it like this, then we have to do other refactorings and we don't want that. So, uh, yes. let's have this one. Okay. And okay. let's do the same one. Let's do the same for the next one. Yes. And this one I will do properly because I, I, I know how to do that now. Right. We remove the final, we add the posts back, and uh, we remove the semicolon replace with the column. We remove uh, class replace with record. Oh. We should remove okay. the static. Like they're already static. Like that does that the word the keyword does nothing there. I'm not even sure. Does the compiler accept that? Could, could it potentially? You know what? Let's put a let's put a static back in and let's compile later. I think there's a decent chance that it won't compile. I'm not sure right. though. So this we don't need because the default infer type pre yeah this stays right. Yeah. Right. So here's good. the cool thing. I want to point out here. This class is used only here and nowhere else. So you know what you can do? What you, what you can do if you want is you can cut this. Um, I can't though. Uh, so can you, Oleg, and then put it back in line 44. And then remove the private and the static. So this might look like an amazing new feature, but it's not. You could always do this. These are called method local classes. I did not know that they exist before records came around because why, if you want to write short methods, would you have an entire class definition inside your method? That makes zero sense. You would have to move that one up there as well and then extract the infer method uh, to make it work. Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Let, we'll yeah, that, that's we'll actually, that, that's that. a fairly, that's, an appropriate, that's potentially an appropriate reaction. Um, yes. But the interesting let's thing about, well, classes in methods don't make sense because methods are supposed to be short and classes are long. But records in methods well records are pretty short so and you can always pull them out so i'm just saying if you need something that is very local like here i just want to keep two intermediate results of a stream pipeline around why is this so hard hey maybe a method local record gets you out of that yeah that's um, very cool um some of the refactorings that we did uh broke stuff though so i think we I cannot have... actually launch this now this is fine. This is fine. I think, let me quickly summarize what I learned. So records, this is a sort of a, a special type of the class, right? The, the things that go in parentheses, they like kind of like parameters to the records are called components. The record has a semantic that there is the state is public and the API is state and uh, nothing but the state. It sounds awfully legally, legally like, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's roll with it. Right, you can add methods, you can implement interfaces. Uh, they implement the accessors uh, 
equals hash code to string for you. Uh, you can deserialize and serialize them, and that's a little bit more advanced topic that we didn't cover, but uh, it's it, it goes a little bit better than with just objects. Uh, so there is there is some work put into that, right? And then, uh, mm, yeah, records. Yeah. I think that's... Um, so that. regarding serialization, um, there's a great Inside Java podcast with Chris Haggerty and Julia Bose, or Bose. I'm not sure what, how, how to pronounce the last name right now. Um, so if you go to inside.java, yes, that's the URL. There's a top-level domain called Java. If you go to inside.java, you will find it somewhere there. It's uh, fairly recent. It discusses record serialization. But the gist is serialization records go to work together really well. There are already a couple of frameworks out there, like I think Jackson, Cryo, and one more that I forgot right now uh, that uh, work with, I think Johnson, Apache Johnson, I think, that work with the records and that they can serialize and deserialize records to JSON or whatever they are doing. Um, so yeah, serialization works really well with them. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, what I can say, I enjoyed this immensely. I think I learned things. I kind of looked briefly at the records before, uh, but just a little bit. I think this is a very powerful concept. Specifically, if indeed I would think about them, as you said, as the semantic entity first, and rather than, than just syntactical sugar. Uh, I think that was cool. Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, learning journey. Yeah, thank you too, Alec, uh, for the, uh, for the, what you call it, for the offer, for the invitation to do this. And I think that's what went well. So um, thank you everybody else who's been here as well in, in both of our chats. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in more graph stuff, do follow uh, Oleg's channel uh, if you're interested. Also, by the way, I think you, you, you consider doing this more often, right? Like learning more of these features between 8 and yeah, whatever is yeah. the I would, I would be absolutely down to learn Java after 8.11 uh, more, more because there are many, many things that have been accumulated in those releases. And my goal is eventually to somewhere by fall, somewhere by September, to be prepared to kind of welcome java 17 as as uh, as the release way more than i welcomed those previous ones which might be like the strategy that you accept as well or might not be but uh, i think this would be interesting and there are many people who would kind of be in the same boat and learning new things is always good yeah definitely so, uh, so yeah stay tuned well well nikolai is a known streamer so follow him if you are not yet and he's doing various streams on various topics. And uh, we are doing these streams about GraalVM uh, sort of weekly. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I see you around, you everybody. Much. Have a yep. great time. See bye around. bye. Thank you, Gadol. Bye, bye. bye. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I think it went well. I think the setup was a little bit fragile, but this is the first time we tried this. Uh, if we're going to continue with those and the same setup, we're going to do better. Uh, we're gonna do better. So if you have any comments, just drop me a line, find me online, uh, and I'd be willing to listen and everything. Thank you very much. That was Oleg, and I learned records today. Very nice. <laughs>